We captured the new iPad today. It's going under the alias, Air. I've got it in the teardown... I mean, interrogation room. To the back cave! Hi, I'm Batman with iFixit, and today we're doing a special Halloween teardown of the new iPad Air. This is the first major redesign of the iPad we've seen since the iPad 2 back in 2011. The most notable changes in the iPad Air are its change in dimensions and slimmer bezel design, down 43% from the last generation. The iPad Air measures in at 169.5 millimeters wide, down 16.2 millimeters from the fourth generation iPad. 240 millimeters long and is also 20% thinner and comes in at 7.5 millimeters thick. The iPad Air lives up to its name, losing a considerable amount of weight, coming in at a mere 469 grams. That's down 183 grams. Wow. Getting the iPad Air to open up was difficult, but that was expected. So of course, we called upon our master of iPad interrogation, the iOpener Kit. With the help of heat from our eye opener and a bunch of opening picks, we finally got the front panel to come loose. Right underneath is the display. It has the same specs as the previous generation with the resolution of 2048 by 1536 and a pixel density of 264 pixels per inch. No major upgrade there, but just as pretty as before. After a couple of screws were removed from the display, we got our first look at the battery. Apple claims 10 hours of battery life on Wi-Fi and early reviews have stated that it has no problem meeting this standard. This is a super slim and efficient 3.73 volt, 32.9 watt hour battery. While impressive performance performance wise, this thing was a jerk when we tried to remove it. Not only is it thoroughly glued to the rear case, but once we dealt with the adhesive, we found that you have to remove the logic board to get the thing out. Speaking of the logic board, this logic board is home to the new A7 chip. This chip is an upgrade from the A6 chip in the iPad 4, giving iPad Air users two times the performance. While this is the same A7 chip from the iPhone 5S, it's a hulked up version running at 1.4 gigahertz. That's 100 megahertz faster than the one in the iPhone. Right next to the A7 is the M7 coprocessor. This little guy collects data from all the sensors on the tablet. Things like the gyroscope, accelerometer, and compass are all working together with this guy, even if your iPad is asleep. Cool and creepy. Lastly, we'll take a look at one of the few modular components in the iPad Air, the lightning connector. While this little guy was easy to get out, you have to factor in the journey to get to it. Getting this far in the iPad is a daunting task, and if it's all for your lightning connector, you're gonna be sad. We've come to the end of our teardown, which means it's time to talk repairability. At iFixit, it's our mission to teach people how to repair everything. So we give every gadget we tear down a repairability score between one and 10. 10 being the easiest to repair and one being the most difficult. The iPad Air got a poo out of pen. Ah, ah, ah. And here's why. Just like in previous iPads, the front panel is glued to the rest of the device, greatly increasing the chances of cracking the glass during a repair. There is a ton of adhesive holding everything in place. This is the most difficult battery removal procedure we've seen on an iPad. The LCD has foam sticky tape adhering it to the front panel, increasing chances of it being shattered during disassembly. And finally, you can't access the front panel's connector until you remove the LCD. iPads have always been a device that's extremely difficult to repair, and this iPad is no exception. While the iPad Air scored a two on our repairability scale, it's just by the skin of its teeth. The redesign of the battery makes replacing it that much harder and more involved. Not only do you have to remove the logic board to get to the battery, there's a lot more adhesive to deal with than in previous iPads. Here's to hoping that things will change in the future, but we're not holding our breath for it. For the complete teardown, including tons of beautiful high quality images, head on over to ifixit.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all our latest teardowns and repair videos. You can follow us on Twitter at ifixit and give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com ifixit. To the Batcave.